Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to make a simple sticky header for our website. First, we'll build the sticky header using HTML and CSS, and second, we'll add an animation effect so that when you scroll down the page, the header will shrink using CSS transitions and JavaScript. Alright, let's get started. To start off, we just have a very basic web page here with a header up at the top and then some main content down at the bottom. When we scroll down the page, the header scrolls off the screen just like the rest of the content. We're going to use some CSS to make the header sticky and that it will stick to the very top of the page and remain visible even when we scroll down. To edit our CSS, let's open up our code editor. We're using VS Code. In our project files, we have an index.html file, a style.css file, and a script.js file. Let's look in the index.html file. Up here, we have the markup for the header. We're going to add some CSS styles for this header element, so let's look in our style.css file. Here's the header element. In order to make the header a sticky header, we're going to add a couple of CSS properties. The first one is position fixed. This will make the header element fixed in any position that you want on the page. We want to fix it to the top, so we're also going to add a top of zero pixels property to the header. This will make sure that the header will be zero pixels from the top, or at the very top. Now let's save this, and let's look back at our web page to see what it looks like now. Okay, when we scroll down the page, we see that the header is indeed fixed up to the top just like we wanted. However, you can also see that the regular content is kind of under the header. This is because the position fixed property takes the header out of the normal flow of content in the page. So the rest of the content behaves as if the header doesn't even exist. What we want to do now is kind of push down the main content um, to a height equal to the height of the header so that it will start directly under the header. Let's see what the height of the header is. Okay, it looks like it is 80 pixels tall. So we're going to edit the regular content. What we want to do is add some CSS to this section with a class of content. Let's go back into our code editor and look for that element, which we have here at the bottom. So I'm just going to add a margin top of 80 pixels, which again is how tall the header is. Save that and reload the page. Okay, now it looks like the content is starting in the right place and when we scroll down, we see that the header is indeed sticky and it's always visible. So this is your basic sticky header. Now we're gonna go one step further and use some more CSS and a little bit of JavaScript to make the header a little bit more fancy. What we're going to do is use JavaScript to detect when you scrolled past the top of the page. And when that happens, we're going to decrease the height of the header using some CSS classes and transitions. There's two reasons that we're going to do this. The first is that, especially if you're on mobile, you really don't want your header to take up too much vertical space because there isn't a lot of vertical real estate, especially on your phone. The second reason is that having a smooth animation just increases the, the, the quality of your user experience on the website, and it gives your website a bit extra layer of polish. Now let's go back to our code editor and look at our JavaScript file. I've already added some JavaScript for the functionality that we're going to build. At the bottom, we have an add event listener function so that every time you scroll on the page, it's going to run this callback function called check header. Above the check header function is going to run a throttle function from the Lodash library. And every time it fires, it's going to write a message to the console. If you haven't used Lodash before, it's a JavaScript library that works in conjunction with another JavaScript library underscore. And they come with some very helpful pre-built functions that you can use among them this throttle function that I'm taking advantage of here. Now, the reason that we need to use this throttle function is because when you are running a add event listener function and you're detecting your scroll events, every time you scroll on your web page, it's going to fire this event a whole bunch of different times. And you don't want, you don't want to fire it so many times because eventually it could slow down your browser. Actually, let's do a quick little comparison test here. I'm going to rewrite this check header function and remove the throttling part. And we will do a little comparison and see how many times it's going to fire. Okay, 
Now we have the check header function running without the throttling. So let's save that and let's go back to our web page and reload it. And we will see in the console how many times that debug message will appear. So this is one scroll. So that's about maybe 15, 15 events being fired every time I scroll. So you can imagine if you're scrolling you know, up and down the page, someone could sort of end up slowing down your browser eventually, because just in a few seconds, you know, we've done almost 200 events. And the code that we have here is, it's very simple. It's just writing this debug message. But if you think about apps like, say, Instagram or Twitter, every time you scroll down, it's actually pulling more and more data. And if you add that up with the number of users, you know, it's really going to slow down the app. So even though this is a very simple example and we don't have to throttle, it is better to throttle just for best practices sake. So we've added the throttle function back in. Now let's do a little comparison test and see how many times that this debug message is written. So now we're going to scroll once and it only wrote it only wrote the debug message twice compared to 15 times the last time. So even if we scroll up and down, it's not firing that many times. And this is, this is really what you want to keep your code, you know, as clean and, and fast as possible. Okay, let's get back to our code. So we need to add a few more items to our JavaScript function here. And let's just break this down step by step. So the first thing we want to do in this check header function is to detect how far we've scrolled. So let's just write a little comment here. Um, we'll just say detect scroll position. And then what we want to do is if we've scrolled, let's say a bit past the header, then we'll add that CSS class to the header. We know that the header is 80 pixels tall. So let's say if we've scrolled a little bit past the header, um, if we've scrolled, say, 100 pixels, add the sticky class to the header element. And then if we've scrolled less than 100 pixels, uh, if not, remove sticky class from header. OK. Now, one thing I like to do when you know writing new CSS or JavaScript is I will actually test out my code in the browser console. So let's do that with this first item here, detect scroll position. Now, if we open our dev tools, which I have open here already, of course, and there's a little console window down here, you can actually write JavaScript and it will, you know, tell you if there's an error or, you know, what the value is. And you can actually run JavaScript in the browser. So the, the first thing we wanted to do is to check the scroll position. And we can do that with window dot scroll y, y meaning the vertical axis. So let's see what this says. It says zero, which is correct because we're all the way at the top. So let's try scrolling down a bit and then refiring that. Okay, now it says something greater than zero, 249.5, which means it's detected that we've scrolled down 249 and a half pixels. I don't really want a decimal, so I'm going to round this off. And we can do that with math.round and then the window.scroll y. So let's fire that again. And now it's a nice round number of 250. So we're going to take our JavaScript here and we're going to create a new variable called scroll position. And we'll set that equal to the window scroll y rounded value. So this means every time we scroll, it's going to check the scroll position. Now, the next thing we want to do is figure out if we've scrolled past 100 pixels. And we can do that by saying if scroll position, that variable we just created, if it's greater than 100, then that means you've scrolled past 100 pixels. So if that is the case, we want to add sticky class to the header. And to do that, let's go back to our browser and we will go to our console window and we will try to get the, the header element. And you should be able to do that by using document.querySelector and the selector would be header. And you can see that it's getting something. So that means that this is correct. It's accurate. 
and we want to add the sticky class. And to do that, we can use the class list dot add, and then add the, the class name, which is sticky. And let's fire this and see what happens. And okay, it looks like the sticky class was added to the header. And then of course we need to be able to remove that sticky class. So it should be remove. And it looks like it was removed. So we can add these two um, lines of script to our JavaScript file. So, okay, if the scroll position is greater than 100, we want to add sticky to the header class list. And if not, which means we'll add a little else statement here, instead of adding, we will remove the sticky class from the header. Okay, so this is all the JavaScript that we need to do. We've saved it and let's check in the browser and see if it works. So we're gonna scroll down and it looks like the sticky class was added to the header. And let's try scrolling back up and it was removed. Perfect. Now that we have successfully added and removed the sticky class from the header using JavaScript, the next thing we wanna do is add the CSS styles for when the header is sticky. And again, we can use the browser to kind of test out our CSS styles before we, we save them to our files. Okay, we wanted to decrease the height of the header when it has a sticky class. We can see here that the height is already 40 pixels and I don't really wanna decrease the height itself because that logo image is 40 pixels. However, I can decrease the, the padding. So we have a padding of 20 pixels and I would like to decrease that, let's say from 20 to 10 pixels for the vertical padding. We wanna keep the horizontal padding as it is. So we'll say 20 pixels. Um, it looks like we have some extra white space here. I think that's from the body having a background color of this of white and not this gray purple color. So I'm actually gonna go in and just kind of copy that background color and add it to the body. Um, so now we have the header, which has the, the smaller padding of 10 pixels. And let's just uncheck this and see the difference. Okay, so that's a pretty good decrease, I think. And we'd mentioned before that we also want kind of the smooth animation instead of the change happening kind of jerkily. So we're going to add a transition property to the header as well. Um, the transition property controls sort of the rate of change of any kind of property that you've changed, um, for lack of a better word. Since we've changed the padding, we're going to say it will affect the padding changes. The second parameter that this takes is the duration or how long the change will take. And I usually just start out with 300 milliseconds. And the third parameter is the, I guess the kind of type of um, animation progression that you have. And the default is usually just ease. Um, there's a bunch of different kinds, but ease is just this sort of basic, you know, general smooth animation. So let's test this out again now that we have added the transition property. And we can see when we check and uncheck the padding that the change is much smoother, which is exactly what we want. Now let's copy this padding styles over back over to the code. Um, so this new padding is going to affect the header when it has a class of sticky. So we will add that in here. And then we also need to copy over this transition property. And we want to affect the header, like the default header element, because we want this transition to happen whether or not the header has a sticky class. So both adding and subtracting the padding, we want it to use this transition. And then, of course, we want to change that body background color. So let's just add this here. And that should be all the CSS that we need. So let's go back to the browser and test this whole thing out. Okay, we'll scroll down and see what happens. And it looks like it is indeed changing when you scroll down, which is great. This is exactly what we wanted to happen. 
And that's it for the sticky header tutorial. Congratulations for making it through. If you want, you can download all the project files for this from my GitHub repo, which I've linked to down below. In addition, if you want to stay connected and up to date with new content, you can follow me here on YouTube or on Instagram at thecodercoder. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.